Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I want to talk to you guys about something that was triggered by a small debate and a call out I saw online, which I'll get into in just a little bit. And it, it's one of these things that's useful for you guys to know that when you're evaluating something that, that someone is explaining to you, it doesn't even have to be about training or fitness or powerlifting or bodybuilding or anything else. It can be any aspect of your life or any area of interest. Is that when you're dealing with people who the entire source of their knowledge base is from personal experience, you need to learn to evaluate what experience can teach you and what it can't. And does it always allow for them to make absolute statements? Because it very oftentimes doesn't, especially when these people have no concept of what the actual academic circles and the research or things like that have to do around the field that they're talking about. And while experience can be insanely valuable in something like an applied science, like anything like exercise science or training, which is very much an applied science, what looks good on paper doesn't matter if it doesn't apply to the playing field or the human body. If it doesn't work in the real world, it doesn't matter what theory or hypothesis we come up with. It has to be applicable in the real world or it doesn't hold any real merit or use to us. But in this case, this individual made an absolute statement that is provably false and used their own experience and their physique as proof of this when their physique doesn't even actually prove it. And the example was there was a guru who got into an argument with my friend CJ Allen, who you guys know I've interviewed, he's a very good coach and researcher and an elite athlete himself. And the guy had made the statement online and CJ called him out. And he had said that training a muscle more than once a week will prevent you from growing. You won't be able to gain any muscle if you do that. Well, such a statement is absurd in light of the fact that in this particular case, just like many cases, the researchers and the science actually happen to agree with the real world coaches. Most strength and conditioning coaches who are at the top of their game, who are good at what they do, actually agree with the researchers in the exercise science. There's no conflict here. They actually agree with each other. So the experience agrees with the book knowledge. And that is that for hypertrophy and size purposes, most people are gonna gain more muscle mass at any given body part or muscle group if they train it two to three times a week as opposed to one. It's not a lot more. You're not gonna gain triple the muscle, but it is a little more. It's observable in the real world and it's observable in the data. So what this person said is not only untrue, most coaches, most professional coaches know it's not true and the researchers know it's not true and the exact opposite of what they said is true. And there are exceptions to that rule, but those exceptions are not the norm. And the interesting thing is the individual who made the statements might be the exception. And when he was arguing with this, he said, well, look at me, I'm, I'm massive and I'm ripped and what the hell have any of you accomplished? Well, the point is, his experience, and his experience is good. The guy was massive and ripped. The guy is like 285 at under 10% body fat. The problem is that his, ex his example is proven to be false and he is actually the example and the exception to the rule on that one. And the majority of people out there, including people he's probably training or coaching are not the exception to the rule. And that exception to the rule is for a very advanced lifter who is on very large amounts of drugs. And that's probably far more than most athletes and bodybuilders might be willing to put into their body. And you're advanced enough that you really struggle to make progress. That progress is really, really slow. That there's no way you're going to come in and progressively overload, say, on your squats or your leg presses on Monday and do it again on Wednesday or Thursday because you're so advanced it might take you a month to progress and add five pounds or to add one rep somewhere to the weight you're lifting. It might take you a month or two months to do that. Well, in that case, when you're that advanced, you may not benefit as much or at all from the additional hypertrophy from training a lift or a body part multiple times per week. Now, you might gain the strength gains, but in even going beyond three times a week, we're generally looking at you're just ingraining motor patterns and you're getting better at a lift. You're performing it more efficiently. So that has merit also, but you're probably not growing faster. But even for them, that, that moderate frequency of two to three times a week may not be stimulating additional growth 
particularly if they're on a very high volume of training and they're on a lot of drugs because that very high volume training when combined with the drugs allows them to grow a lot longer than the human body would normally grow as a result of a, a workout. You normally don't grow longer than about two days from, from one training session. You come in, do some squats, even 10 sets of them or 10 sets of barbell curls, they stop growing. The, the, your quads and your glutes from those squats stop growing within two days. The biceps stop growing within two days of doing those curls. That's, that's your growth window. But with a lot of drugs in your system and when combined with a very high workload of training, that could extend out five, six, seven days. It could extend a lot longer. So if they're already growing from it and they can't progress in the extra sessions, they may not benefit from them at all. So in his case, he possibly was growing optimally. But the problem is that he's got a very limited experience. His experience with himself is someone who is genetically blessed, because you've got to have good genetics to get that big, who is on a ton of drugs, who is very advanced. And something worked for him, and it did work for him. It clearly worked for him. The guy is a monster. But to make an absolute statement based upon your experience, that when you know you're an exception to a lot of rules, to make a statement that what you did is the only way, and if you do something different, it will tremendously impede your progress. When you haven't gone and researched a seed, well, do the science, do the top coaches, do everyone else around the world, the top experts, not the gurus, but the real experts with credentials, education, who train professional athletes, does their experience match with yours? And when it disagrees with your statement, then you got a problem. And that's an example of why you cannot always use your personal experience of, of something worked for me to make absolute statements of how it will compare against other methods or will compare in the general population of lifters. You simply can't do that. And this is a classic example of why you can't do that because you actually, at that point, with the best of intentions, have now given out bad information based upon your own experience. Because you're the exception to the rule and the majority of people out there would benefit from doing the opposite of what you just advised. They would benefit just a little bit. There's a slightly better method. And that's oftentimes the case of personal experience of that it can give you very, very valuable tools sometimes, tremendously valuable tools. It doesn't always allow you to understand the bigger picture, the broad spectrum of things, or how the different things that you have done compare in a hundred different people. And that's where science and studies become really useful, studying a hundred different people to see if 85% of people respond best to one thing and 15% respond best to another. And then none of them respond best to two or three other different things. They all fall behind those other two. That's what science is really good at. Studying the larger groups to see how it's gonna break down and seeing how well individual things compare to other things when you start pulling individual variables out. And that's something that you cannot do effectively on your own training yourself or a very small pool of clients. And I think the best coaches out there, of course, are people who, who do have a bit of both. They, they understand the science, they understand the research, and they have a lot of real world experience working with not just themselves, but with, with other athletes. Those are the guys who generally have their shit together. All right, guys, this video's run on a bit longer than I wanted to, and it's turning into a ramble. So you get the point, and that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it has been informative. And I will talk to you guys next time. But let me give you guys a bicep shot before I go. Oh.